Hi guys, it's Emily from Novel Novels and welcome to today's video. This is my July book haul, 30 plus books. Now I added it up wrong. I'm filming this on the 25th of July. So the Emily calendar officially ends today. Anything that arrives today goes on August. It was going to was going to have ended on Monday. But unfortunately we went to Alice's funeral and um I got two gifts from the lovely Gem from Gemma Books. And then when I spoke to Alice's lovely mum and husband, they told me that about the charity shops that were there. And Jane said to buy a pink book for Alice because she always used to tease me about pink books and get me to buy them. The girls that we went that I was with, um, they did pick two pink books off the shelves in one of the charity shops. But they already had those two. One of them I'll show you today. I'll show you in this book haul that I got to, actually this month. So I did buy a pink book and when I get to it, I will show you that. And I did buy another book and I'll show you that as well. But yeah, you know me. When I'm down, what do I do? I buy books. And obviously with everything that's happened and there's been some other personal stuff happened this month, I have bought books. I've only technically bought 24 books, but I've been gifted eight. Three of those are APL products because they're from Readathons. So I think they kind of count as gifts. One of them I have, one of them I review will eventually be up for, but I'm struggling with it. But we'll talk about that under my wrap up. I feel a bit more safe talking about things that aren't my wrap up, not rather than things like that. Anyway, let me show you the books because otherwise this video will be stupidly long and Thomas will absolutely kill me because it's holidays. Hello. Yeah. So the first two ad PR products are from the lovely Love, Love Book Tours. And these are books that will be reviewed in August. This one, first one is Hold Me by Helen C. Kelly. I think it looks like it's got chronic pain rep on it. Um, it's about Dawn who has been suffering from ill health. And who, for years, for the last few years, Dawn has been suffering from ill health. Being given a diagnosis with a double-edged sword. But yes, they knew what wrong, was wrong with her, but now she felt useless. All those things she put on hold may not happen. Falling in love, having children, no longer a possibility. Who would want to stick around? But yeah, the broken body thing, this looked, this looked amazing. This looked like such a me book. So I had to get this. It's not too long. And my review for this will be going up in August. I'm trying to like put my contemporaries to one side so that I can count how many I've got of each genre, which I should have done beforehand, shouldn't I? This Mahoosive Chunkster, it's from Love Book Tours as well. It's 1,000 Tudor people. And I'm over halfway through because it's got to be read by like, the 20th, my review's got to go up for August. Some bits I'm finding interesting, some bits are a little bit more challenging. It is non-fiction, so I'm finding some of the people that I know from Tudor history are very interested in reading more about that. Obviously, there are some bits I'm just sort of skim reading, but yeah, we'll talk about that in another time. Then the lovely chatty from the Mad Chatter got me and some of the other booktubers little gifts because of Obviously, losing Alice, she knew that I was struggling and she bought us all similar gifts. And one of the, the ones I got was The Adventures of Sherlock Holmes by Arthur Conan Doyle, which Alice loved. Um, you'll see a few more Alice books in this haul. But look how pretty it is. It's got a lot of short stories in it. I will probably read it when I need to read that. Um, but it was perfect. That was one of the many things she sent us in little gift packages. But it was absolutely perfect. And I love it. And I know the girls have loved it. It's actually, I'm doing this message checking. Then I got my anonymous Amazon gift person has sent me two books this month. Whoever you are, love you both, love you, thank you, thank you, thank you. The last one that I got the last few days this week was Cosima Unfortunate Falls Abroad, which is a book that is a sequel to Cosima the Unfortunate Seals of Star, which I read for the Spoonies, and I absolutely loved it. This one I can't wait for. My mum can't wait for this book. And oh, it's got pictures of the characters again. So we've got Cosima, Petal Pearl, Mary Dear, The Amazing Lumine, Miss Marilyn, Edmund, Miss Fox, Cat and Miles. Some of the characters from the last book. But I love the first one. So this is a really great anonymous gift. And that's my fantasy. Middle grade fantasy, so that's got to go away. And the other anonymous gift was Beloved by Toni Morrison. Um, There was a book that I read not long ago and it had about all like um, certain books that everyone should read. And this was on them, Beloved by Tony Morrison. I've not read a Tony Morrison book. I want to, it's Sue Lad, Bluest Eye, Songs of Solomon. I really need to read their books, um, his books, but I think Tony Morrison's he or she, I don't know. 
But this is very, it was a very good classic, but apparently will destroy me, so maybe not right now. Seth is also a million miles from sweet home, the farm where she was kept a slave. Unable to forget the unspeakable horrors that took place there, she is haunted by a violent spectre of a dead child, the ch daughter that died nameless, and whose tomb is etched with the word, single word, beloved. It's a tale of brut brutality, horror, and most of all, the love at any cost. It just looks amazing, so that's my classic. This is the one that I'm struggling for, and that is um, Dia by um, Daisy Goodwin. It is a good book, and I've rated it four stars, so you'll hear more about it on my wrap-up. But I don't know if it's the time that I'm reading this. Obviously, I was reading it coming up to the funeral, and my head's just not in it, but I have to write a review, review to that today, so Tandem sent me that. Then, when we were away, um, Jen from Gem Books was unhauling some books, and she gave me some options. And the first one I wanted to read was The Phantom Tollbooth by Norton Jester. I think this is going to go on my classic shelves upstairs because it is a classic, but it's a modern classic. So it's going to go actually, actually upstairs. And this is one genuine turnpike tollbooth. It's not a perfectly satisfied, your wasted time will be refunded. Okay. I don't know too much about it. I've just found out because I know that Jen bought this when we were shop book shopping with Alice the first time I met Alice and my sister Charlie. And they buddy read it, and I can't for the life of me remember what Alice thought of it, but Jem didn't like it, but I wanted to read it, so I hope I like it. And then one that looks absolutely stunning, I didn't know much about it, but it looked like a, quite a fun book, and that's American Royals by Catherine McGee. It's pink! Yes, Alice, you'll be laughing up there. The Washingtons have ruled America for almost 250 years. They're gorgeous, fiercely famous, and the beating heart of the most glorified court in the world. But behind the glutter and glishing ballrooms, Elegant gowns and perfect persona lies the forbidden romances, scandalous secrets that could haunt the throne. I need to actually know what genre this is, so I don't actually know that. So I'm going to have a look. It does look fun though. Then, now is the books. So there, that's my last of my gifted books. Now I will show you the books that I've bought. Um, yeah, I'll talk about a little bit about them, but again, not too much because he will kill me. So the first one that's on my pile is Hex Education by Maureen Kilmer. I bought I three for six pounds at water at um, the works. I'll tell you the other ones when I get to them. But this was a witchy romance and I think I'm kind of thinking it's fantasy. And I will plan, hopefully I'm going to try and nag Cat from Booze and Reviews to read it with me because I've got a load of witchy books we need to get to once we've read all our Percy Jackson books. A guilt-ridden former coven is forced to tap into the magic of their past to stop the their lives from going up in flames. Beauty, grace and a resting witch face. 20 years ago, Sarah, Katrina and Alicia were set were inseparable. At college they discovered an affinity for magic and practiced in secret until their most ambitious spell went horribly wrong, resulting in a catastrophic, catastrophic fire that burnt down their college dorm. And then now they've all got different lives and da da. But it does look like witchy fun, which is what I needed. I'm kind of that's fantasy. That will go as fantasy, okay? Because it's witchy. Witchy goes fantasy. Another fantasy book, which is one that is the latest Percy Jackson book. I thought I'd already had the whole series still. But I didn't, so I've now got to buy the whole series again, the whole original Percy Jackson series again. And this is The Chalice of Gods, but, and it's the sixth book. And I now need to buy the first five. Great. But I will get them, um, but apparently I thought, because it was a new one and I would have read the Percy Jackson books, I could straight away go and read this with Cat. Cat's found out we may need to read the Tiles of Apollo series, which I only own two of, and I still need to buy three more. This is going to go on the machine. But it's Waterstones Cut Edition, sprayed edges, stunning. Um, and apparently, basically it's about Ganymede, the god, the cupbearer of gods has lost his golden chalice. Not only is this embarrassing, why do gods keep losing their magical things? But it's potentially disastrous. One sip from the cup will turn any mortal into a powerful god, and old gods do not welcome newbies. Rick Wilden is my, like, an absolute favourite author. I've got to get the bloody um, rest of the Trials of Apollo books before I can read the, all of these. But I will be getting them. I will be carrying on. Rick Royalden is my now my new addiction. Sounds really dodgy, but you know I love the fantasy Greek thing. And anything to do with Greek and fantasy is just like sugar candy. And talking about fantasy, a book that I got as soon as it came out, Sleep Like Death by Caelan Byron. You know I love Caelan Byron. Amazing author. This is like a fairy tale retelling. This is a retelling of Sleeping Beauty. Eve is ready to be the queen of sword, but to be ready to be the queen sword to be her vengeance. Prince Eve was raised with one purpose to destroy the night. 
I don't need to know any more than that. I need to buy We Were Not Supposed to Die in the End by Caden Byron, but I've literally bought most of their books. And apparently Olivia from Olivia's Catastrophe bloody loved this. So if Olivia loved it, I know I'm going to love it. It's fantasy, it's sugar candy, what do I need? What have I got about sweets at the moment? I've got tip to a sugar candy in my books. Then to like an Alice book, um, I think I was having a ball, ball like, like we all do, like all of us have been doing, and I saw this Penguins Classics edition, which is stunning at my the, the Baz Books, and my boss said I could have it because she knew that it would make me smile, and it's five, the Five Orange Pips and Other Cases by Arthur Conan Doyle. It's more Sherlock Holmes retellings. I didn't realise, obviously, that I was going to get the ones from, from Chatty. It's not too long. This Penguin's Classics edition has actually got some pictures. Where'd... I just saw a picture. It's got a picture. And it's a beautiful Penguin's classic. So, along with Agatha Christie, obviously, Sherlock Holmes was one of Alice's favourite authors. So, this one's for you, girl. Oh, that, that's fancy. Why did I put fancy over there? Fancy's there and there. I'm making sure my piles aren't mixed up. Then another book that's kind of Alice, kind of me. I'm not going to make excuses. I'm collecting all of the Daphne de Mario books. I saw this in my charity in Bell's books again for a pound. The Glass Flowers by Daphne de Mario. I think Jack said that she read this for Jane Austen in July last year, last year or the year before, because it's a historical fiction book set in the Jane Austen era, the Regency era, and it's about Sophie Duval read reveals to her long-lost nephew a tragic story of their family. The world of the glassblowers has its own traditions, its own language, and its own rules. If you marry into glass, Pierre Laib, I can't say the name, warns his daughters, you will say goodbye to everything familiar and enter the closed world. Ooh. Collecting my DDMs, that looks stunning. And it's again, it's the edition that I'm collecting, it's the Varago Classics edition. I've got a thing about collecting, but classics, haven't I? Do you think, do you guys want me to do a, like, different, like classics editions again and just do more of that and do another classics bookshelf tour. Then to just a historical fiction that I fancied because I just fancied it and that is Rachel Horay's The Dream House. I think it's like a generational saga. I love Rachel Horay's books and this is everyone has a piece of their perfect house in the perfect settings. When Kate Hutchins and her family move from London to the peace and quiet of the Suffolk countryside, Kate is full of hope. Same with her mother-in-law, she must surely be Temporary before they find a wonderful hope for their own. I don't know any more than that. Historical fiction, I think. Family saga, that kind of thing. Then to the latest book I bought in the family saga um, is The Secret Letter by Kerry Barrett. I don't, again, I don't know more than much, too much about this. Excuse me. It's my last book I bought before I went on holiday from Baz Books. Lon it's set partly in London 2010, which is to do with, and it's to do with the suffragette era. And that is 21-year-old Esther Watkins would do anything for the suffragette cause. In prison, force-fed and beaten, she's determined to fight for what she believes is right, no matter what the cost, it will cost the killer. That will destroy me, but you know I find um, real, because I know that one of my great relatives was a suffragette. But I do find the force-feeding bit really hard to read, so I might wait. And then you've got the modern-day timeline of Kent 2019, with her marriage in tatters, school teacher Lizzie Armstrong moves to sleepy Elm Heath for a fresh start and her pupils and the community still in her heart. When the school is threatened with closure, Lizzie knows she has to fight and she looks to the school's founder for inspiration. Sounds really good though. Then to a book that needs not much talking about and that's Katie Lumsden's very latest book, The Trouble With Mr Montgomery Hearst. Somehow I've got my cover dirty already so it's going to be hidden. Everyone knows about this book. I'm well excited. Got it on the day. I've had it pre-ordered it. It's exciting. It's amazing. I can't wait. And then last but not least on my on this pile before I go on to my mahusib contemporary pile is Paul O'Grady A Country Life. It's just a 20p book about cats and pets and dogs and everything else. Again, I didn't need much. So 20p so so far i can now i can tell you the genres i'm counting american wars as contemporary i've got two non-fiction because it's the hundred the thousand tudor people and that country life two non-fiction in counting that that tandem book one two three four historical fiction you can tell it's not been my jam just i've gone with what i needed so four historical fiction five classics four fantasy and then 
the rest of the rest of contemporary. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen. Seventeen contemporary. I'm going to have to ease off on the contemporary when I'm on holiday. I will ease off. This will be a book will be shown when I return from holiday. But yes, this will be the first video you see of the month. I will have been good. Maybe. Yeah, Thomas is right. Probably not. Now to show you the books that the contemporaries. First one I got is Ali Hazelwood's latest book, Not in Love. Ali Hazelwood, it's like the biochemical romancy thingy. It's like Ruth but might not have it all, but she has enough. A few friends that she can always count on. The financial stability she's yearned for as a kid and the, unsuc the successful career as a biotech engineer. So it's about biotech sort of things and sciencey thingies and all that. Her world is stable and pleasant and hard fought until the hostile takeover and its inoffensively attractive front man threatens to bring it all crumbling down. Ali Hazelwood, romance. I don't need any more than that. Then I went to the kids to Thomas's school fate. They had a bookstall. They were all like 20p, 20 or 25p, I think. No, sorry, her light. They were 50p. And I was good. I only bought three books. For me, that was good. This was one of the, yeah, Thomas is right. This was one of it. I like Carolyn Roberts, one of the her books that I bought. And it, this is another, uh, like, a summary book. As to whether it will be read this summer or next summer, I don't know. Next stop, Sea, Sunshine and Romance. I've already, I think the amount of Sunshine books I've bought this month. Maybe it's Hope of Sunshine because I haven't got any today. Settling a new life in a cosy cottage by the sea. Lucy's determined to chase her dreams this summer. Inspired by her Italian papa, she brings a taste of Naples to Northumberland. Northumberland's where... And she's from, and I've got a relative up there. It's like, with, and she's helping them with a pe fledging pizza business. So then something to do with that. One night, Lucy crosses paths with Jack, the charismatic owner of a cocktail counter van. I don't need to know any more than this. Again, sugar candy. Ali McNamara's latest book. You know, she's like, she's like me. She's a chronic pain sufferer. Her latest book is a summer book, but it came out in August, like in end of July. I don't get why that would have happened from in my personal order. So I've decided I'm going to read it in September because it, we might get like a late summer. And it's set in Cornwall. I'm like hoping that we get like nice weather in the summer in September as well. So this will be read more. And it's sort of set in St. Felix, which is where a lot of her books have been set. About like they learn the tale of a Felix, a Felix mermaid who grants wishes to those who find a treasure. Cornish folklores. Um, Summer Life, Ali McNamara, then what do I need? Then I discovered a new contemporary author this summer and I've discovered Helen Rolfe and this is The Boathouse of Stepping Stone Bay. I don't think this has to be read in the summer because even though it's got like the beach, oh it has got sun, sand and secrets at the bay. Okay, so it's another summer book. So if it doesn't get read this summer, it might be read next one. My shelves are gonna need a rehaul because I think I've got so many summer books and I need to get books for the autumn and winter. And this is about family thing. Um, as a kid, Nina O'Brien spent all their summers at her grandparents' cabin by the bay at Stepping Stone Bay. Long sunny days full of fun, laughter with her best friends, Leo, Adrian and Meeve. And um, her friendships with Leo suddenly blossomed into love until one fateful night that changed everything. Oh God, this sounds like it's gonna destroy me. 12 years later, Nina must return to the bay to renovate the old cabin and pass it on to a new owner. But not only does Leo still live in the cabin next door, he still works in the family boathouse. Right there on the bay. Oh God, it does look good though. Then to a book that doesn't have to be read in summer, but one of the booktubers, I think Charlotte from Coiny Reads wasn't keen on this. And this is Begin Again by Hilly Acton, but I think Katie did like it. So I'm hoping I'm gonna like it. It's the whole like sliding doors thing. Frankie McKenzie is feeling unsettled, like something is missing from her life. Is it home to call her own, travel or a rewarding job or a relationship? But before she can work it out, she dies in a freak kebab-related accident after another dud, first dud of first date. But life isn't over for Frankie. Instead, she's offered a second chance. Kate, Frankie can revisit key moments from her past to find out if any different choices will lead her away from that fateful kebab takeaway and, it, and out of her comfort zone. Find doors. Doesn't have to read in the summer. That's good. Then this is a pink book that the girls were trying to get me to buy yesterday. But I'd already bought it at the school at the kids' school fight. Oh, by the way, that beginner game was part of the um three for two, uh, three for like six pounds of uh, the works. I'm not support. I'm not sponsored by the works, by the way. 
And this is, again, it's Hanaline. I believe I've read one of her books before, but I'm not sure. Sweet Shops. Books for Sweet Shops, Second Chances. Another Pink Book. Yeah, another sweet one, Thomas. But a Sweet Shop book. Holly Berry has had a good career, a steady relationship, and enough savings that the two of them will be soon be able to buy a house. But when she finds out her boyfriend's been cheating on her, ooh, she decides to retreat to Cotswolds and a place full of sweeter moments. Sweet book, pink book, for you. So. And she hated pink, but she liked teasing me about it. And again, another bloody pink book. But this was my bargain because it's Sarah Morgan's latest book. I do talk about it in my gratitude journal, which I'll try and remember to link below. But it's her latest book. It's pink. It, I nearly bought it full price and I found it in a charity shop for a quid. Not a bad bargain whatsoever. Pink book, very good quality. And this will be safe for next summer because it's pink and it's safe. But unless I fancy reading summer books at different times, do I go out of my comfort zone and read summer book at a different time? I don't know. And you guys know I love Joe Thomas. I think about, this is actually my first two Joe Thomas. I've got two Joe Thomas books. Yay! This is one of our older books though. This is The Oyster Catcher by Joe Thomas. It's Sink or Swim in the Search for Love. It's set in, I believe, County Galway, so that's obviously an island. This is one for you, Jack. And it's set. That it's the last place Flo, Flo, Fiona Clutterbug expects to be, end up alone on a wedding night. But afterwards, I do have barely left her mouth. That's exactly where she is, with only a sequin shoes and a crabbed camper van for company. I don't need to say any more than that. I think this one doesn't have to be read in the summer, but it is like contemporary. Then you know I love Christy Barlow's books. I'm, create, I'm collecting all the Love Heart Lane books. This is her most recent one that I found in Waterstones again. That was the last one in the three for doodars, three for six pounds. And it's Love Heart Lane, where friends are there for you no matter what. And flowers are Florrie Appleton's life. So when her beloved Ada, Aunt Ada passes away, she's swiftly issued with an eviction notice and told to vacate Rose Cottage, shut the vintage flower, flower, flower van business and leave Ada's gorgeous gardens but a Florrie doesn't go down with a fight even if it's the developer she's taking on is run by Tom Houston the man who broke her heart at university years ago Harcross Lane I don't think this has to be read in the summer I might be able to get away with this in an autumn book but it's one of her recent books so I'm not sure if I have to read in order really then to the other book that I got from the kids school even though I saw it in our charity shop it's The Staycation by Christina McGuckman I've not read any of her books Holiday Pink, no, this is yellow, very bright summery yellow. Travel agent Hester Monday has been keeping secrets. Thanks to a year's fear of flying, she hasn't been on a plane for years. Now Hester wants to make a good impression on our latest client, Jake o Oakenfield, who heroically in who was heroically injured saving an old lady and is now laid up in a luxury hotel. Does look like fun. I don't think this has to be written in summer because even though it's yellow, maybe, I don't know. Then Kirst... I talk another book I talk about in um my gratitude journal is The Burnout by Sophie Kinsella. It was in hardback but it's now been put out in paperback. I know Sophie Kinsella's had a really rough time health wise, so I wanted to support her. Um about being burnt out, romances, doesn't have to read summer. Don't wanna to know too much about it. But yeah. I get the burnout feeling, trust me at the moment. I am very, very burnt out. This holiday that I would have been on hopefully will restore my strength but yeah this looks brilliant then i found a jojo moyes book and i've read reading most of i want to collect like read a lot of jojo moyes books this is night music which is not historical fiction but actually looking at the back of this it might be very saved isabel delancey has taken her gifted like gilded gifted life for granted but when her husband dies tried suddenly leaving her with a mountain of debt. She and her two children have to, are forced to abandon their home and move to a crumbling pile in the country. With the house falling apart around them and the last of her savings disappearing fast, Isabel turns to her neighbours, not knowing that her mere presence has stored, stirred up long-standing obsessions. And then the last Joe Thomas book is Retreat to the Spanish Sun by Joe Thomas. This is the one that I found when I was away and yep spanish sun summer book joe thomas what more do i need i love joe thomas's books will the summer escape be the answer she's looking for eliza has a full house after her grown-up children moved out but she's downsized to a smaller property 
but now they're all back, every room in the house is occupied and Eliza needs some peace and quiet up to work. Okay. When Ab pops up saying house sitters wanted, Eliza can't resist the chance to escape to a stunning Fien Fienier in southern Spain for a few weeks to help her focus on her dream, uh, achieving her dreams. Brilliant. Just what I need. I went to go straight on the shelves. And then the pink book I got for, you, for Alice, it, just because of the way she, was teased, she would tease me about Alice's pink books. And Alice's mum said about it, so... A wedding at Summit Sunday Co by Bella Osborne. I love Bella Osborne's book. This is about as pink as I could get when we were away. Escape to the Sandy Co where the scent of summer and the sound of wedding bells are in the air. It's a beautiful, beautiful copy. I love Bella Osborne's book. Again, it's a summer book, so this probably will be saved next year. But it does look gorgeous. And then last but not least, another book that I talk about a lot in my gratitude journal, and that is Why Mummy Drinks at Christmas. This is a Christmas book. And I paid extra for it because I wanted it straight away and I wanted it for Christmas. And I found out that I collected this edition. I found a collector's edition for five squidlings. Tis the season to get trolleyed. Why Mummy Drinks series. Christmas. It's saved for Christmas. It's a collector's edition. It's beautiful. It's gorgeous. I cannot wait to read it at Christmas. So, those are all the um, 32 books I've got. <laughs> Let's see, how, let's see how many books I can get read this in July, so I, my numbers don't go up exceedingly. But the, this is it. As of the 25th of July, the Emily calendar is over for July. Boom. On August now. Any books that got, get, get, get got on holiday, August. That's what it is. Um, what books are these do you think I should prioritise? What books do you think are summer books? Do you buy seasonally? Do I break the norm and read not seasonally let me know down below if you got to the end of this video um leave me a shopping bag emoji because i have been buying a bit too many books um but thank you all for the, your support again thank you all for your love let me know also what books you're reading what books you're buying if you've bought any special bargains if you like my video give it a thumbs up if you're new to my channel not subscribe yet ring on my ding -a -ling. i'll see you all soon bye bye